morning. Just to repeat that, that there's a special envelope in the pew, and it's specific to UCC missions of different kinds and ministries of different kinds. And there's a sh- I think there's a short explanation on the envelope, and if not, in the bulletin. So uh, feel free to support any or all of those that move you and help us help other people in so many different ways. Other announcements for Life of the Church of Community. You can find upcoming events on the back, including the plant sale and the spring work day. Then please rise up if you're able and just for a few moments greet those around you, welcome people that you don't know or that you haven't seen in a while, and make some friends.
saying hello to each other, we will enter into the space of worship by actually asking you to say no. We are asking families and individuals to share their gifts of music and Robert to, be, to share with us both words to be playing for us today. So we appreciate that you are here. Thank you. This is also school vacation week, so it's extra special to get you here. Please rise if you are able to join us in song number seven, which is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
Please join me in the call to worship, which you can find here in your bulletin. Sometimes we hide behind closed doors, inside safe walls. Hiding even from ourselves, we withdraw into small corners of our own hearts and minds. We forget to live fully. Then you come, love resurrected, showing up when we aren't looking for you. You breathe out and blow away the shadows. You help us welcome the presence of joy, resilience, humor, forgiveness, patience, and compassion. misguided beliefs, but all of us are hurt by such violence, and so we hold those whose lives have been ended, those who love them, those who respond to such violence, and to all communities of faith, no matter what faith that might be, who are gathered, seeking hope and meaning and resilience in the face of such violence, and trying to build bridges of peace. We hope all of this and offer it to God. Are there other prayer concerns or hopes and celebrations for the life of this church, this community? Yes, Sue. For our friend Sasha Black, who is unfortunately under the weather, so please keep her in your prayers that she gets better soon. Sasha Black that she may recover from her illness. I encourage you to learn for the church and the community. Yes, Chara. transitioning towards the end of his life for his own comfort and dignity. We pray for people that can't be with us right now. We include folks like Eddie Good who's been moved to a different community and we don't know if he can return. We pray for the family, the Venti family, whose memorial service was held yesterday at the Wentworth. And for all those who have experienced either a long goodbye or a sudden parting 
sometimes friends doesn't even include goodbye. For those who are making their way through a world that is changed by death. And while we believe that love lives on, it is hard for those who remain here to walk through this changed landscape. We pray all this for our sister church, the Chikanda Church in the city of Matara in Zimbabwe. They too have experienced great challenges in that nation, and they continue to be a place where the churches hold up strength and light in a community that is challenged to remain ethical in the face of all of the political and social pressures upon them. Are there other prayers for the life of the church or the community? There were prayers also, great hope this morning for our children. We have many, many people graduating this year, either in high school or college. And so we think about our young people who are growing up and making choices and decisions, who have exciting lives unfolding ahead of them. Sometimes they are the face of hope for us. They remind us what is possible and what is coming. And why? Why do we keep going? And we pray for those who have returned to our community right now. Uh, Tammy Kern is actually here today. They have been here for a couple of days just visiting. Andy and Kaylee moved to Colorado last year. She's out here just for a few days visiting friends, but I ran into her this morning. And I think we'll be having a few of those visits from different people over the summer if they come by at least to say hello. So, happiness for the chance to see dear friends. Does anybody have any help? Happy friends of spring you want to add? A blooming Persithia, okay. That's good. My husband's sending me those kind of pictures from Massachusetts, but it's easier to get them down there than it is up here. Anything else? For Cynthia. All right. Please be with me in prayer. We lift up places that are hurting. We lift up people that need your love for so many different reasons for that inner voice of guidance and wisdom and clarity as people are making decisions about their futures, as people are making promises to each other, commitments and covenants, as people are saying goodbye to each other, or continuing to say goodbye to those who have already left us and gone ahead. And for those who are living this all kinds of challenges, and yet are also our living and breathing reminders to be grateful for the days that we have and the ways that we can be fully present to our lives regardless of our bodies and our changing conditions. We ask for peace, peace in our hearts, peace in our relationships, and peace around the world, in our communities. We ask for wisdom for our leaders. We ask for the safe return of those who stand between us and harm, who embody and go out into the world to create the safety that we so desperately need and the peace that we so hopefully try to build. And we ask that you shall listen to our silence. Hear the words as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Cheryl, would you come forward? today is from John 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. And now I'm going to invite you to come forward and leave. Try to read right into the mic. There's a basket full of loaves on your head, yet you're begging for crust of bread from door to door. Pay attention to your own head. Abandon giddiness. Why are you knocking at every other door? Go knock at the door of your own heart. Thank you, guys. Did anybody notice the theme of those two readings? Knocking and doors. That was a reading from Rumi which reminds us not to knock on everybody else's door, but to knock on the door of our own hearts first. And then there's the great passage that Cheryl shared with us from John. And we're really familiar with this. It's a locked room mystery, right? I mean, it's one of these things like, how did Jesus get through that door in the first place? Everybody was locked up. But it's not really a mystery. The thing that locks the door is fear. The thing that drives people to acts of violence against those they consider to be other is fear. Bombings in Sri Lanka, shootings in synagogues, shootings in churches. All the different ways that we close the door and lock it. 
and stay behind whatever barrier we consider to be the most safe. And yet, who is hurt by that fear the most? It starts by those who remain locked inside the fear. They are first and foremost those who are hurt. And what will unlock the door? What will bring down the barrier and what might stop the violence? Love goes through the door. Love can't be turned away. You could be behind the locked door and love will show up somehow for you. I've shared stories with you about a woman in prison who was locked away for years because of the crime that she committed, away from her own family, her own life. And there in that prison, which is an unredemptive place, where systems are actually designed to separate prisoner from prisoner so they're easier to control as a crowd. And where there are ranks of crimes, as some people are shunned for how bad their crime was, she met another person whose crime was so bad that nobody would talk to this woman. And she was there for life. And yet, how was she going to live her life? How was she going to get through day to day if she had no hope? No one believed that she was worth anything. She herself had internalized that message. And yet, she would, away from her were taken all choices, even to take her own life. Everything was taken away from her. She was supposed to simply get through. And so here's the person that I was supporting in that prison who's there for a few years, and she knows she'll go back out through the locked door eventually. And she starts inviting this other woman to a Bible study. And the other prisoners get upset with her because she also sits down with her at meals. She keeps inviting her to every possible kind of group there is, helping this woman who's there for life, find some kind of connection that will pull her through. The other prisoners say, stop inviting her. <coughs> We've decided that she's ostracized. Nobody is going to communicate with her. We don't want her in our groups. And yet, where did she belong? If it wasn't in a place where people were talking about faith and love that sees through all the brokenness, and every mistake and every wrong that you may ever have done and says you are worth something. In our stories from Holy Week, Christ is saying that to somebody who's being executed for a crime right when they're dying. And again, when this group of people who said they loved him and believed in him are so afraid of the repercussions of his death and the sentence that was passed on him by the Romans. They're locked in a room, hiding. They're not up going, hey, we got to keep this movement going. They're afraid. And yet they are the people that the rock of our church is built upon. That movement began with them. It began with people who were so afraid they laughed themselves away, and they are the people that told the story that we have been handing down for 2,000 years. Because love went through a locked door and saw in them hope and possibility. And said, you are who I will send out because I can't be there anymore. There's no one else except you. You are it. You are my hands and my feet. You are my voice. You are the vision that will see in others what I see in you. And it won't be just inside the Jewish community that you will go. You will go out into strange places, foreign places where you don't know the language, where it's a different faith tradition, where everything is in question, and you won't be sure who you are, much less who they are. But when you go, I go with you, and you carry inside you a love that loves beyond the locked door 
fears and beyond all fear. And so this woman in prison, M, we'll call her M, she insisted on bringing the other lifelong prisoner with her and sitting with her and recognizing her. And finally, the woman said, why are you doing this? God hates me. She literally said that. God hates me. And then said, God's just waiting for you to know that God does love you. That door can't be unlocked for you. We can't change the fact that you'll be in prison forever. We can't take away what you did. But here, right here, there are other people that need resilience and hope. And if you can know that you are loved and that you are worth something in the middle of a dark place where you don't see a way out. Imagine what you can say to others. Imagine what is possible right here inside this place where you will be living your life, however long it may be. And so this woman ordered a Bible because it's one of the only books you're allowed to order in prison. You can order things for, to participate in your faith. And she started reading it. And she found there a reflection of herself and a message that started to say, you do have value. Regardless of your past, regardless of what came before, you are loved. And in you rests love and hope for other people as well. We don't know what happens to her next. M stayed for those couple of years and continued to sit and have meals with her, connect her to groups. And she attended those groups and began to have a sense that perhaps there was a way to make a life even where she was. And M was set free and built a whole life for herself. Love can do things that we can't imagine. And so the question for us is, who is other to us? Who fills us with fear? Where do we put up our boundaries and our barriers? Where do we lock our car doors and roll up the windows? Or drive a little faster through that place or try not to get there at all because we don't want to be in this place of risk. I'm not saying that you should always go into the most dangerous places because you're challenging everything. But do you remember when Robert Abdi was here last year talking about Islam and talking about the things that connect us and the things that separate us? And one of the great keys to unlock doors is curiosity. Simply to be curious about someone who is other than you. If you love dogs, sit down with a cat person. We are divided socially by so many different things. And yet one of the gifts we can give each other is our curiosity. Our willingness to simply sit down and listen and exchange ideas and get to know the person who is different from us. And it is this lack of curiosity and this lack of recognition of humanity on the other side of what divides us. It is one of the things that feeds the extremity that lets somebody pull a trigger or set off a bomb where people have gathered in hope for peaceful reasons to build the bridges that we need to build. We can't do everything to change the world, but what did Christ come with and meet there fairly? He met it with peace. Peace, my brothers. Peace, my sisters. He didn't get upset with them. When people were curious, he answered question with question, but he allowed the questions and welcomed them. The doubt in the story that Cheryl read opens doors 
Because people are curious and we're allowed to be curious. And when we open the door, perhaps we won't shut it again. Look around in your lives and find out where you need to be more curious. Maybe there's somebody invisible to you that you should be nosy about and figure out what's going on. The cashier in the checkout line who might be working three jobs or living not in a safe home. There are people that are invisible to us that we ought also to be curious about. May love, may curiosity, may peace come into our hearts. Not because we're so perfect, but precisely because we are imperfect, but we are what God has. And however it is possible for us to be that peace and that love walking in the world, we are called to it. And sometimes it's something as simple as what this church has committed to, which is that our front doors are open 24-7. You will always be able to walk through the door of this place, night or day, no matter how bad or how good things are, and come in here and find a place of respite and sanctuary. We have committed as a community to hope and peace and love, and curiosity. Let us do so in our private, individual ways as well. Thanks be to God. Please rise if you are able. For the Psalm 208, Now the Green Blade Rises.
privilege to have a moment of special music. curiosity and the capacity to build bridges and paths of peace in our own hearts, in our own relationships, in our own communities. And we ask that you will bless these gifts and put them to the work of peace wherever it is needed. Thanks be to God. And then you should find one final hint. Followed by a benediction, so you can simply remain standing. The last hymn is Lift Up Your Heads, O Mighty Gates, Psalm 127.
sisters, go in peace.